What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Garak here, your casual gaming dad, coming at you guys with another Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker review video. Uh, unlike our jar reviews videos, we are this time doing a patch review video, much like we did with 6.1, much like we did the overall Endwalker review. We are now reviewing the patch 6.2 release. Um, much like my previous reviews, I'll only really be reviewing the content that is relevant to me and what I do from a casual player's sort of visual. Um, any big changes, most of the major stuff, uh, this will be as spoiler free as possible. So any of you who enjoy my content and are watching this video, uh, do keep in mind, I'm going to keep it as spoiler free as possible, just in case, you know, there are anyone out there who still just is not at this point just yet. Um, that being said, let's just dive right into it. And, um, <clears throat> we'll just start with the, uh, the big, the big two things, all of the P new PVE content. There's tons of it. There's tons of it. And most notably, obviously with this new patch, it is a major patch. So we get new MSQ stuff. Um, which means that we are continuing on the story of Endwalker. We are picking up where we left off in 6.1, where we have now uh, finished, officially finished the story arc that revolves around the conflict between Zodiac and Hydaelyn. And uh, we are now kind of just off on our own new journey, as it were. And uh, I do remember that back in 6.1, I kind of said that the story was, it, it seemed like, you know, our new story arc was kicking off slow. And it's kind of, eh, you know, it just felt like it was a setup story. This patch, 6.2 story, um, I hate to admit it, but it is kind of in that same, kind of in the same vein, as it were. Um... It is a little more faster paced. It does take us to places that I've been interested in seeing in the past. And I mean, we have technically visited them before in the past. Um, and it does introduce some new story elements that are very interesting, but it did still feel we're, we're still winding up, right? We're still waiting for that pitch where it's just going to suddenly like hit us and be like, oh shit, you know? But I mean, if you think about it, I've been attributing this wind up period much to A Realm Reborn, you know, back before A Realm Reborn got wholly, you know, all reworked and redone to kind of speed up the leveling process. The main story of A Realm Reborn's era of time really took a while to really get going you know it's like a steam train it's like choo, 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 you know and you really had to like give it time to pick up the pace and then once once that thing was going full steam ahead whoa oh boy it just kept going all the way through the remainder of arr all the way through heaven's word all the way through stormblood all the way through shadowbringers up into the climax here at the very beginning intro it era of endwalker and now that that arc is closed and done we are starting a new story arc so things are picking up and they're picking up slowly but it's got me it's got me interested i'm, I'm very eager to see where this goes and and what we do from here as the warrior of light so uh i would i would say like story element msq it didn't take me that long to do the msq to be honest like there were a lot of cutscenes, but there weren't so many cutscenes. You know what I mean? Like, like there have been times in the past where it's just like I feel like I'm more watching a movie or a series than I am actually playing a game. And uh, this time it didn't feel like that, and it, which I can appreciate. It was nice. It was good. Um, I, I, I would say it's, it, it's good. It's heading in a good direction, and I'm, I'm eager to see what's waiting for us. Um, other PvE content that came with that um, is, of course, the continuation of Pandemonium, the new raids. Um, uh, that story, I wasn't really following that story too, too closely, so you'll have to forgive me. I don't really have a honest opinion or review of the story of the Pandemonium Raids, but I do know it involves certain figures in a little, you know, a couple classic, like, whoa, what a twist moment, but... From what I from what I did skim through with the story and reading of the dialogue real quick, it, it it's pretty good. It's pretty interesting, um, but more about the actual content of those raids later i'm more focusing on just like the story so far um and i mean that's pretty much going to bring it close to this section honestly because there's not much more narrative wise i mean there's a ton of side quests i haven't really done too too many of the side quests uh but i do know that some of them are 
humorous. Some of them do involve what you see here in the background at the moment, which I will touch a little bit later in this video because it is a really big part of this patch. It's something that people have been waiting for for some time. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it. So, I mean, what is available in this patch? I mean, like much all other uh, major patches, uh, in addition to more MSQ stuff coming at you, um, it includes a new dungeon, which is related to the MSQ. It includes new raids, so we get four new raid wings, uh, continuing on with, you know, Pandemonium. Uh, we also get a new trial, which has uh, an extreme version. And, you know, also on the topic of raids, those uh, those raids, there's just normal available right now. Uh, Savage will be released as of Tuesday, though. They delayed it by like a week, and they're seeing how that works. Um, so there's all that. And then, of course, as you see behind me, like I mentioned, and I will talk about a little bit later, is, of course, the Island Sanctuary. It's a huge, big, huge thing. So this is, this is what we got. In addition to, like, the story elements and the fights, uh, there's also, of course, new tombstones to farm out. So we're back on the 450 a week tombstone grind. And then uh, just making sure we grind out our uh, normal raids every week to make sure we get those tokens, whether you're doing it for glams or to actually wear them. As you can see, I'm wearing the chest plate right now because I think it is technically statted better than the tombstone chest plate but also it just looks fucking awesome i mean come on we got giant ring of fire behind us what's cooler than that and a cool cape i mean yo <laughs> um break it down a little bit do some things individually the raids or we won't do, do into the raids yet we'll go into the um the dungeon the new dungeon uh, i gotta say the new dungeon is fun uh, I'm going to try my best not to spoil anything about it, but I will say uh, it's your standard dungeon format. You know, you get trash, boss, trash, boss, trash, boss. You know, it's pretty pretty self-explanatory. There's not much to it. The trash is whatever. It's forgettable. No one cares about the trash. But what's memorable about this dungeon, in my opinion, are the bosses. And most notably, in my opinion, the first boss is very memorable because it is something that I have only seen maybe once before maybe twice before it's like it's it's the kind of boss fight you don't see very often and once you see it i don't want to spoil what it is but once you see it you'll understand what i'm talking about it's very unique and i feel like all of the bosses in this new dungeon brought something slightly new to the table you know we had our generic you know standard boss mechanics of like oh here's fire don't stand in fire okay get out of the aoe's okay dodge this and then oh stack markers yeah like you you have your standard mechanics but each one of them had something kind of newish or something that we haven't seen in a long time in my opinion where it was like some sort of gimmick mechanic but it was fun uh same thing with the trial boss that was released again i'm not gonna spoil anything about it but i will say that the trial was exceptionally fun i've only done it on normal mode i just unlocked extreme mode last night which is crazy because i've been finished with the msq for a while but uh i've just been lazy about talking to the minstrel to unlock the ex version but uh, nevertheless um i did just unlock the ex version i haven't tried it out yet i'm thinking i might I might want to give it a go because the normal fight was super fun it was chaotic but it was fun and there was a lot of like a lot of mechanics going off all at the same time that were very interesting and very kind of unique and i enjoyed it i thought it was fun i think the extreme version could be even more fun so i might dive into that definitely a good time uh and then last but not least of course are the four new raids within the next grouping of the new raid tier um it is uh, i think the previous year was known as asphalados this one is known as abyssos uh and i gotta say each one of those bosses is a good time i don't know if i'll jump into savage this tier i might because the weapons do look phenomenal it'll be a wait and see my schedule doesn't really support good raid time but we'll see we'll see guys um nevertheless i've done all four of the fights multiple times on normal and they are fun they are good they're not too hard they're relatively easy to figure out and i will say that most of the mechanics on there are very unique each of the bosses brings something to the table much like with the dungeon where it's like and it's not even a gimmick mechanic it's like a unique mechanic that is actually very interesting and could be implemented in the future with other bosses which would be really cool so definitely check those out it's definitely been fun it's been enjoyable so far all of the content has been great 
Um, other things I'd like to touch on with this patch in 6.2 that came was uh, some some things with PvP. Uh, the new series Momstones uh, has been flipped over to series 2 now. So we uh, now have new rewards. In fact, if I turn on my UI, I can show you. Um, series Momstone. So we are on series 2 now. You can see I haven't done much PvP. I'm not going as hard for this one as I did previously. Uh, and you can see why here. I mean, our first major reward is you know an emote. Um, and then, of course, you get your obligatory uh, two midway rewards of just uh, adventure um, adventure plate kit you know frames or whatever that's kind of and yeah, it's whatever um we get two minions so a cerulean and a crimson robot minion that's okay um and then the ultimate prize of course is a uh it's a mount and they showed pictures of the mount um it looks just like a red dragon from uh any of the heavens ward zones if you go to uh let's see see if i can remember what it is here yeah if you go to the whoop nope i don't want to actually go there <laughs> but if you go to the drivania four lands and you just fly around you'll see like big red dragons with wings it looks like that it's nothing i'm too uh too excited over it's nothing i'm like gunning for right now um i'll get it but nothing too crazy um if you're into ranked pvp if you want to uh get into the top ranks then uh season two has actually officially begun as of a couple weeks ago so get on that if you're all about farm and rank do it um as far as i'm aware crystalline conflict is the same uh let me see i know that they've changed a few ui things um and they've also adjusted some of the quick chat or they've added new quick uh quick chat options but really yeah, not not much has changed with Crystalline Conflict, to be honest with you. And, um, you know, I'm not too broken up about it. I mean, CC is still the go-to PvP to farm if you're farming Series Momstones or Rank. I mean, each match is five minutes long. It doesn't take long. They're fun, they're quick, they're fast-paced. Get it in, get it done, keep going. Um, Frontlines is still great for the roulette. But one of the biggest things about PvP for 6.2 that people were talking about was the reintroduction of Rival Wings. Now, I I didn't I, I might have played Rival Wings maybe once <clears throat> way back in the day when it was first released and never again. Um Am I glad that there's another form of PvP available? Yes. Have I done it since 6.2 is released? No. And I'm going to tell you why. It's not because I don't want to. It's because the queue times are out of control. They take so long to get in, it's not worth it. I just haven't had the energy to just sit there and queue and wait for it to pop. So you'll have to forgive me. I can't comment much on the new Rival Wings, but I can say that you know, if, if that's your jam and you don't mind hanging out in queue forever, kick it up and let me know how it is, please. I would, I would love to know how it is. Um... Moving on to the next to the next topic of 6.2, um, the you know obviously with new patch means a new gear, so we have new dungeon gear. Uh, it's your typical like kind of notches down from you know i600, but it's a good filler guide if you're catching up with alt jobs. Uh, and it also it looks pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, most of the sets look pretty dope. Uh, there's the new tombstone gear, uh, which also looks yeah it's okay some of it looks good some of it's it's all it's all right it's not bad i'll say that it's not bad um <clears throat> but of course you're going to use your six uh 450 a week capable tombstones to buy this gear because it'll be the best bang for your buck if you are not a savage raider because eventually you get to upgrade them to equate to savage gear even if they aren't static properly uh and then as you can see i'm wearing the chest plate there is the normal abyssos gear that you can get you can get uh, one token from each floor per week. It's the same thing as it's been since like Heaven's Ward. You know, you get one token per week, and each one is based off of a trade in for a piece. So, like four tokens for chest, four tokens for pants, two tokens for gloves, boots, and helmet, and then one token for each accessory. So, you take your pick, you just grab what you think is going to be the most optimized, and you stick it on. There you go. Um, the new EX trial does grant you a weapon, so that's pretty good if you can manage to get in and clear it. You'll get a pretty decent weapon pretty early on that'll last you for a while um there's also a new tier of crafting gear i don't have 
any uh, or I have one I have the weapons unlocked so if you go to master recipes master 10 you can see the uh, Rina Rina Sita gear so you can see here it's uh, I level 610 costs you know an arm and a leg but it's good stuff and obviously you can pen to meld these and I mean it's a full set it's accessories armor weapons all craftable gear if you are rich or you have crafters that are like fully geared and melded do it up go get them because you'll be able to hold on to those for a little while too so those will be really good in fact I, I do eventually have to replace my weapon i'm using the old augmented tombstone weapon and the uh rena Sita will be good until uh, seven weeks have passed and i can get the tombstone weapon so eventually when the price drops i'll do that um Let's see, really the only other two things I'd really like to touch base on that I've been doing uh, or have affected me in any way um, is of course this here, the big topic that I'm standing on right now that I'll cover after I touch on job changes. Job changes. Now these affect me because A, they affect some of the jobs that I play and B, uh, because it did affect my releasing of or recording and releasing the pve dragoon job review so i've had dragoon leveled up to 90 for a few weeks now and i just haven't released it because i was oh 6.2 is coming out and i know they said they were going to make some changes to dragoon so i don't want to make a review and then have them do skill changes or whatever and then be like oh shit now i gotta go back and do it again you know kind of like kind of like how it worked with paladin right i got paladin 90 6.1 released and they like reworked paladin and i was like well good thing i didn't do it so i said well I'll hold off well I was fucking disappointed <laughs> because I was like, I held off for nothing. I'm going to tell you why. Real quick rundown. I've got the patch notes, you know, right here on my other screen. <clears throat> and uh, real quick rundown. Uh, tank rolls just overall provoke got um, threat generation increased. I don't know why. I don't know what the purpose behind that was. I don't think there was ever an issue with threat generation, period. But uh, someone out there must have whined and complained about it. So I don't know whatever you know i know i know a lot of tanks these days have taken to using provoke as a pull mechanic i don't i don't, I don't know why I, if i'm not mistaken i think your ranged pull ability is still the better option because a it does damage which generates threat and b it has a high threat modifier so you're basically doubling threat i don't know i think the idea is i think what they did with this was because so many tanks enjoyed using provoke as a pull because it has a longer range they were just like well you will just make it equate that of like tomahawk or shield lob or whatever i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know i only use provoke for two things oh shit emergency moments when somehow some way i've missed a mob or the other moment when i need to do a tank swap and shirk is down that's it that's all i don't know I don't, I don't see any other reason to use provoke I don't know. i'm not a provoke spammer it's stupid but anyway uh so paladin got some changes uh holy spirit had its potency increased uh by about 10 so from 270 to 280 and then uh when you're under the effects of requiescat its potency go went from 540 to 560 so they got a little bit a little bit of boost there uh blade of faith truth and valor all got potency increases as well by about 40 it looks like each one got a 40 40 potency increase so pretty big pretty good on that i know paladin's slacking on damage so uh warriors i was a little disappointed with warriors because um i keep clicking out of my window so it's like <laughs> it keeps shutting off the music uh so our maim storm's path and storm's eye all got potency increases uh from 280 on maim to 300 uh 400 to 410 on storm's path and 400 to 410 on storm's eye so barely barely anything as far as damage it's almost like a slap in the face if you ask me it's like here we're gonna boost your your potency on these abilities by uh 10 and of course you know and mabe got like 20 Ooh, 20 like oh boy slow it down we're definitely catching up to dark knight and gunbreaker now boys like really disappointed with that like i'm not i'm not saying warrior needs tons more damage i don't mind not being the number one damage tank I really don't but like don't insult me by giving me like a couple crumbs off your plate and say here you go you should be thankful you got crumbs be happy like no f fuck off with that that's stupid i'd rather have gotten nothing period 
Um, shake it off. The effects of this action will now be applied more quickly. That's actually your good one. No delay when you use shake it off now. So it's just like you use it, boom, effects are up. So that's good. You know, gives you more time to like have a little wiggle room, you know? Um, Dark Knight. Dark Knight, actually funny. So Abyssal Drain had its potency increase from 150 to 240. I mean, I, that was needed. Abyssal Drain damage was awful. Uh, but this is this was interesting. Living Shadow. All right. Effect duration reduced from 24 to 20 seconds. Uh, the Simulacrum will now always attack the first target the player attacks after summon. The Simulacrum will no longer use Quietus. And the Simulacrum's Shadow Potency... Uh, Shadowbringer potency has been increased from 450 to 500. Potency of all Simulacrum actions other than Shadowbringer have been increased from 300 to 350. So on the surface, it looks like a buff because they do more damage, but they last. They they don't last as long. Okay, and they no longer attack with Quietus. So in AOE situations, the Living Shadow has been nerfed, but in single target situations, it's kind of been buffed. Which is strange. It's such a weird change. I don't, I don't get it. But I don't. Know. It, whatever. I don't. I also don't really play Dark Knight, so maybe there was some sort of science behind it that I wasn't aware of. Um, Gunbreaker Brutal Shell had uh, some potency increase from two sixty to two seventy. Again, they got the tenor. Uh, solid Barrel from three forty to three sixty. So again, Gunbreaker didn't really need damage increase, but they got it anyway. Um, jug rip, abdomen tear, eye gouge all had uh, their range increased to 5 yarms, so just a little more reach on it uh, faded circle potency increased by 10 uh, blood fast recast time uh, increased from 90 to 120 that's kind of a kind of a kick in the gonads uh, hyper velocity range increased from 3 to 5 yarms uh, blasting zone potency increased to 720 and double down reduction in potency after the first target has been chart uh, has been changed from 20 percent to 15 percent so some interesting changes there to gunbreaker i believe the idea was to try and get it more up to dark knight's level um but yeah you know uh, and this is the last one I really want to go in depth and cover, which is, of course, whoops, Dragoon. So I was like, yo, I'll wait for 6.2 to review Dragoon because um, they're going to do some changes. Wrong. So this is what Dragoon got. Jump. This action will no longer be replaced by Mirage Dive while under the effect of Dive Ready. And then High Jump. This action will no longer be replaced by Mirage Dive while under the effect of Dive Ready. So basically, after I've gotten used to just pressing Q, which is what I bind High Jump to, to use High Jump, and then pressing Q again to use Mirage Dive, I now have to find another open hotkey somewhere in the already bloated dragoon hotkey mess that they have to put mirage dive on there so i can fucking use it what what why why i don't understand who the fuck was complaining about oh i can't i can't use high jump and mirage dive like back to back if they if they share the same button who whined about that who who had a problem with that you shouldn't be using high jump with mirage dive because last time i checked you can't save charges of mirage dive so what you're just wasting it i don't understand i don't understand i don't get it i don't get it that's what i delayed my dragoon pve review for that so i don't know guys i don't know what to tell you um just quick rundown of other things uh samurai got some potency increases um one potency decrease uh based on how many targets are hit which is you know nothing too crazy reaper got a couple potency increases on their like one two three combo uh white mage had a duration increase on liturgy of the bell scholar S certain things no longer generate threat there was a lot of a lot of talk about the change that uh heal over times or regens will no longer generate threat so i mean that's a good thing 
Um, and then I think Machinus had a few few uh few changes a few uh potency reductions which is i don't know like it's i don't know much about machinists which is why i'm not going to comment too much on them but i am surprised to see potency reductions on a job you know the reason for that is because i know yoshi p and his dev team have said time and time and time again that they would much rather take a job that's underperforming and bring it up to the level of the jobs that are performing higher than to take the higher performing jobs and just murk them down and with the nerf bad all the time i know i know they've said that before so i'm very surprised to see machinists getting hit with nerfs but um i don't know i don't play machinists i have a level 30 something machinist so i can't even really comment on it guys so i'm sorry i can't dive more into depth with that but that's about it uh and last but not least this video is getting long it's gonna be a, like a half hour 6.2 review i apologize but of course here we are on our island sanctuary uh island sanctuary was the next big hot topic um that everyone was talking about ever since it was announced and uh 6.2 introduced it and it's um it's pretty good it's it's not bad it is not bad i'm gonna throw that out there it is not bad it's a very unique experience and i think for a lot of us out there myself included island sanctuary is not what we thought it was gonna be i i know deep in the back of my mind deep in my heart i wanted it to be a replacement for housing and that's not what it is it is definitely not a replacement for housing in any way, shape, or form. But it is still a fun, relaxing experience. Now, obviously, there are people out there that are going ham. They've already got, like, maxed out rank 10 island already, fully developed, all the bells and whistles. They've completed it all, 100% completion. I'm the best, right? Good for you. Seriously, like, whatever, man. If that's how you want to play it, cool, whatever. For me, I'm taking it very slow. I'm like rank five, I think, on my island and just chilling. And I think it's nice if like I just want to chill and relax, but I still want to play some Final Fantasy. I just come in here, I grab a bunch of materials, I craft a couple things, maybe start a new building build, and then that's it. And I just chill out, man. And it's nice because you can hang out here. You can be alone by yourself. As far as I'm aware of, you can... I haven't tried to craft on this island, but you can just do whatever you want on the island by yourself too, like... You don't have to it's just you you can't like decorate things the way exactly you want like you can in the house you can't garden for yourself like you can at a house there is gardening but it's all island based so it is interesting it is definitely fun i gotta say i think the most fun thing for me so far has been catching the pets because there are rare pets that you can find on the island that are different colors they're like pokemon shinies and uh that's the fun thing is trying to hunt them down and find them and catch them if you can so that's that's definitely one of the funner parts for me but as i develop it more i'll probably have more things to comment on but definitely check it out man island sanctuary is fun it is nice it's cool and it's a change from the normal stuff um to the people that are complaining and griping that it's not available to everyone who has not finished the main uh scenario quest in endwalker yet listen I understand you might have been excited for this and you're disappointed and i'm sorry that you feel disappointed but you have got to understand that there is a lore reason why you don't get access to this until you finished the main scenario quest for endwalker like the very first iteration like you don't even have to be in patch 6.1 or 6.2 content you just got to finish the main gist of endwalker's msq there is a reason for that i'm not going to spoil it because I know there are still some people working their way through it. But there is a reason. So just be patient and do it. And I promise you it'll be worth it. Okay, guys? So I'm going to wrap this video up. I'm going to say overall 6.2 has been a blast. It has been great. I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Plenty of content. Plenty of shit to do. And it's keeping me going. Um, had me talking for about half an hour about stuff. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are enjoying Final Fantasy XIV. I hope you guys are enjoying this patch 6.2 look forward to savage it's coming up this week if that is what you guys are doing good luck to everyone out there progging uh good luck to everyone learning and doing the extreme fights and um 
yeah, shameless plugs coming up. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. And if you like my channel, if you want to see more content from me, whether it's Final Fantasy XIV, Skyrim, Stardew Valley, Seven Days to Die, any of that stuff that I like to play, please hit that subscribe button. I am one subscriber away from hitting my goal of 10 subscribers before the end of the year. And it would really mean the world to me to hit that goal i know it's a super small super low goal, but for someone like me that's huge uh, it'll help my channel grow it'll help motivate me to keep doing this and honestly guys uh, i just want to make sure i'm providing many people as i can with entertainment so hit that subscribe button and i will see you guys in the next video thank you